Here I've got this nice viewer suggested problem, and this viewer is from Morocco. And this comes from a 2021 math contest given in Morocco. So let's see how this goes. We want to assume that we've got a natural number n and a prime number p, such that we have two divisibility conditions. p divides n cubed minus one, and n divides p minus one, then we wanna show that 4p minus three is actually a perfect square. So let's see maybe how we could do this. The first hint is maybe how can we use the primeness? And we can use the primeness along with the factorization of this n cubed minus one to break this into two cases. Like I said, let's factorize n cubed minus one as n minus one times n squared plus n plus one. So that means our divisibility condition tells us that we've got, like I said, these two cases. Either p divides n minus one. Our case two is p divides n squared plus n plus one. That's a standard property of prime numbers. If a prime number divides a product, then it must divide one of the terms from the product. Okay, so let's maybe look at case one first. So notice that this tells us that p is less than or equal to n minus one. So in order to divide a number, you must be less than or equal to that number. But that combined with this condition that n divides p minus one is problematic because notice that n divides p minus one tells us that n is less than or equal to p minus one. But now we can put those together and see that this doesn't really work. So we could maybe subtract one from both parts of this inequality to give us p minus one is less than or equal to n minus two. Then we could bring that n minus two down here and we see that we have n is less than or equal to n minus two, but that clearly is a contradiction. So that means case one is impossible. So we need to work with case two, which is p divides n squared plus n plus one. But notice that means that we can write n squared plus n plus one as a multiple of p. Let's call it mp, kind of for obvious reasons. And then we wanna do something like complete the square of this left-hand side, but we wanna complete the square so that we stay within the integers. We don't wanna complete the square inside the rational numbers or anything. And that's because we're working inside of this integer setup. So how can we do that? Well, the only perfect square binomial where the coefficient of n squared and n is the same it occurs when you have that coefficient being equal to four. So that gives us some motivation to multiply this equation by four. So that'll give us four n squared plus four n plus four equals four times m p. But now this is almost a perfect square binomial over here on the left-hand side. We just have a plus four instead of a plus one. So let's subtract three from both sides and that'll give us four n squared plus four n plus one equals four m p minus three. We can factor that left-hand side into two n plus one quantity squared equals 4mp minus three. And now we see that the quantity 4mp minus three is a perfect square. So that means that all that's left to show is that m can only be equal to one. And if m can only be equal to one, that means 4p minus three is a perfect square, which is exactly what we want. So let's see how we could do that maybe. Notice we haven't used this divisibility fact yet. So let's use that divisibility fact to see what we get. So if n divides p minus one, that means p minus one is equal to n times k for some integer k, but that tells us that p is equal to n times k plus one. But now we can insert this into our equation relating n squared plus n plus one and p, and that'll give us the following. So I'll underline each of these in purple to show where this is coming from. So now we have n squared plus n plus one is equal to m times nk plus one. Now let's rearrange that so that we solve for m and see what we get. So that's gonna give us m equals 
And I'm gonna write this in kind of a tricky way. This is gonna be N plus one minus M times K times N plus one. But now notice that's of the form A times N plus one, where we've just absorbed all of these guys together into A. So notice our goal was to show that M was equal to one, but that's been changed to the goal of showing that A has to be equal to zero. So let's see where we can go from here. I'm gonna go back to this purple equation, which now I'll circle in red, and I'm going to leave the left-hand side as is, but I'll replace the right-hand side with this value for M, or I guess I should say this expression for M, and then this expression right here for P. That means we've got N squared plus N plus one. That's gonna be equal to M times P. So here we have A N plus one times N K plus one. We can multiply out this right-hand side to give us A times K times N squared plus A plus K times N plus one. Now we can cancel a one from both sides of the equation and then also cancel one factor of n from both sides of the equation because n is a natural number, so it's not zero. So dividing this entire equation by n will give us n plus one equals a times k times n plus a plus k. So again, that's from dividing this equation by n. Now, I wanna point out, and this is really important, that k cannot equal zero, because if k is equal to zero, then that means that p would be equal to one, but one is not a prime number. So now let's solve this for n and see what happens. So if we solve this for n, we'll get that n is equal to a plus k minus one over one minus a times k. But now I wanna notice that that is negative if a is not equal to zero. But that means that n is not a natural number. So that means that a must be equal to zero, but that tells us that m must be equal to one, but that tells us that 4p minus three is in fact two n plus one quantity squared. In other words, it's a perfect square and that finishes the problem. So that means the motivation,